Yle Podcast. Hello and welcome to All Points North, where we bring you news and views about Finland every week. In this week's programme, we delve into political manoeuvrings in Parliament, go a little deeper on the experience of blind immigrants in Finland, and ask what are the best Finnish foods. This is the All Points North podcast, telling you everything you need to know about Finland this week. Hello and happy weekend everyone. Welcome to All Points North. We're here to give you the lowdown on what's been happening in Finland this week. My co-host this week is Denise Wall. Welcome Denise. Always a pleasure to be here, Egan. And our first guest this week is Villa Sauri, a duty editor at Ulla's News and Current Affairs Department. Welcome Villa. Thank you very much. Yes. And we're also joined this week once again by Alicia Pren who's come all the way from Pori. Licia, it's a pleasure to have you back on the show. It's great to be here, Egan. Now, Licia, last time you were here, we talked about the challenges you face as a blind immigrant in Finland and how that sometimes has brought negative attention. Um, We wanted to go into a little bit more detail this time about your experience because we have done a story which will be on our website at ulo.fi slash news. Um, and we we found it very fascinating. So very quickly to start with, can you tell us about your visual disability? Uh, yeah, I was born with something called autosomal congenital cataracts, which is a fancy way of saying uh, I was born with cataracts, uh, which are um, bits of protein that uh, overlap the lens of the eye. And uh, mine are caused by two gene mutations, uh, so they run in my family. And uh, I've As I said, I've been blind since birth. Um, I've had one of the cataracts removed, uh, but because I had it removed when I was 25, it didn't give me any more distance, only colors. And I'm actually going to be having the second one removed uh, in three or four days, uh, whatever Tuesday is. And uh, again, it'll probably just give me more color. So in, in short, really, I'm just extremely nearsighted i guess more so than the average nearsighted person and glasses won't help because it's a it's not an issue of the placement of the lens but rather uh the protein that was on top of the lens right now okay. alicia you you said that you were born with this condition and you've obviously had to develop some coping skills over the years Correct. what would you say are some of your go-to tools for getting by with this disability Well, uh, when I was younger, it was much harder because technology just wasn't wasn't there. Uh, they had at one point encouraged me to wear a camera on my head. Wow. Uh, but now, <laughs> thankfully, things have gotten smaller and better. Uh, so now my, my real go-to tool is my cell phone, um, mm. you know, with the camera that I can zoom with really well. And, uh, you know, GPS is a really big help. Uh, my camera, but lets me, uh, if, if the GPS tells me to go somewhere and I, I just don't know where I am, I can usually use the camera to kind of figure out right. and then also my feet I do a lot of seeing with my feet so um, I, I walk a bit oddly but it's usually because if I'm in a new area I'm trying to uh, make sure there are no obstacles I wasn't expecting or stairs or uh, just changes in elevation in general okay so uh, as we said you you, you have a um, quite a big presence online you work at an animation studio as well and I mean how's working life as a partially sighted employee? Uh, Well, as I said last time, I think uh, at first everyone is really confused when they hear blind and then animation producer in the same sentence, but uh, it's it's not as difficult as one would imagine. I would say the hardest part of my job is anytime I have to uh, pay bills, oddly enough, anytime I have to put an invoice into our system um, that doesn't have a barcode, because Mm. I have a barcode reader, but uh, sometimes companies just don't put barcodes on their invoices and uh, then I have to kind of take a picture of the invoice zoom in check uh, the reference number and the bank account number and all these things and then double check about seven times to make sure that I've then put it in correctly so the 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 hardest part really is um, just anything anything like that otherwise you know sending emails and things um, I I, I just make sure that the director is happy with what the animators have done and then I just send it forward so in that sense I don't need to see too much of the actual animation um i mostly work in the beginning part of the project so writing i actually just finished writing a series and uh 
you know, things like that that aren't super visual. So it doesn't usually pose much of a problem, mm. the fact that I can't see. Well, you certainly haven't let much get in your way, Licia. Uh, and recently you spoke to one of our reporters and told her about some of the difficulties you face doing things that many of us take for granted on a daily basis, like moving around your hometown. Let's have a listen to what you had to say back then. Sometimes I wish that the people uh, around me would sort of just know that I can't see them because that makes it also really difficult. Like when I'm crossing a street that doesn't have a, a, a traffic light with sound, I am always kind of aware that the people in the cars or the other people on the street are just assuming that I am a strange person or that I am drunk or something. And that's why I'm acting strangely or that's why I'm waiting so long or that's why I'm not sure if I should walk. Um, similarly in the shops, you know, when I go to buy groceries or when I go to buy clothes especially, I think people think that I'm smelling the clothes or I'm doing something weird with their vegetables or whatever, when in reality I'm just trying to read the prices. That is uh, quite interesting, Lisha. I mean, you talked about sort of feeling your way and, and seeing with your feet, but what other kinds of techniques do you resort to when you can't see properly, especially when you're visiting a new place, for example? Uh, usually I just, especially in a new place, I just hope that people are nice. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I just really hope that people are understanding and uh, that people believe me when I say that I can't see. Um, mm. So in Finland, that's less of an issue. But in the States, I had many bad encounters where I would need help and I would say that I can't see and that I needed help. But then there'd be a million questions about, well, if you can see, how did you do this and that? Whereas in, in Finland, um, there was one time where our tram broke down and uh, we had, I was in Helsinki and the tram broke down and we had to just keep walking and I was like okay I think I know where to go but I'm not entirely sure so there was a woman on the tram with me and I just said to her and finished like I'm sorry but I I am visually impaired and I need help getting to where I'm going and she's like oh yeah no problem no problem mm. so so like you know she walked with me almost to exactly where I needed to be until I realized where I was and mm. and and then it was totally fine but just hoping that people are nice is one thing but also just kind of looking really close at stuff um I love fashion, oddly enough. I love clothes. I have a very unique style. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and let's just, let's just uh, for the record, for those of us, uh, you who don't have the visual cues that we have, Lisa has bright pink hair and it's fantastic. I have bright pink hair and a fallout boy dress and I basically <laughs> never grew out of my 2007 MySpace phase. But um, I, I have a really unique style and so uh, usually I just have to hope that, uh, like I said in the clip, that the people in the shops, especially the people employed in the shops, don't think that I'm acting strange mm. or uh, don't think that I'm trying to steal or trying to smell stuff or whatever. Uh, I got lost in Stockman once. Um, that was fun. That was like <laughs> recently, actually. That was around Christmas time. I got lost in Stockman trying to get downstairs to the to the grocery store because I wanted to buy coffee beans and <laughs> I was alone. And I just walked around for like, I don't know, probably the better part of 25 minutes. And then when oh. I left, I told my friend, like, yeah, I I was lost here for a bit. And he's like, you know, they were probably watching you in the mm. security footage, wondering what are you doing? <laughs> and it's like, it's scary, but also, um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but I think the fact that I'm like pretty and young and American gets me kind of off the hook with these sure. things. Like, I think if like uh, African guy was also blind, he might have a bit of a harder time than I do. I don't know that for a fact, but I think it might be a lot harder if if, if I didn't look mm. Finnish and ish. Mm. Now, Lisha, um, you talked a lot about relying on, on certain kinds of uh, inputs. So, for example, uh, in, in the web story that's coming out later today, which you can read on our website at wiley.fi forward slash news, had to put that plug great in there. Plug. That was great. That was great super plug. good. <laughs> you talk a lot about relying on uh, prominent landmarks and, and yes. bright colors. But what about how your visual impairment affects your interpersonal relations. I mean, a lot of us rely on visual cues like a person's expressions and, you know, maybe a tilt of the head, very small things. What what can you do to, to make up for that lack of information? Tone of voice, definitely. I am very big on listening to people's tones um, because obviously I, uh, you know, I can't see 
if someone is smiling or not. So I really have to kind of go with their tone. Maybe they're, if they're close enough, their overall body language. Um, I actually like to think I'm really good at reading people for someone who can't actually follow like facial cues. So it, it usually it's just the overall vibe that the person is giving me. Um, you know, like on dates and stuff, I can usually pretty quickly tell if someone is just not having a good time without having mm. to see that they're visibly uncomfortable. I can just sort of feel it like, okay, this guy just wants to leave or whatever. Mm. Um, so usually it's, uh, you know, it's it's just a lot about understanding the 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 atmosphere. And I feel like that means, that makes me have to be kind of hyper aware a lot of the time, whereas uh, people with normal eyesight, they can just sort of look around yeah. and, and get the idea. But for me, I have to always kind of be thinking, always be processing, always being aware of my surroundings. Um, you know, today, actually, when I was uh, waiting for my friend to uh, finish smoking when I was on my way here, um, some guy came up to me in the railway station and was like, can you help me? And I said, okay, what, what, what do you need? And he's like, give me money. <laughs> and I was, he, he didn't say please, he just said, give me money. And I was like, sorry, I, I don't, I don't have it. And already in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I can't see if this guy has a knife or not. I can't see mm -hmm. if this guy is like angry or I can only hear his tone of voice. He just sounds nervous. He sounds like he's new at this whole asking strangers <laughs> for money thing. Let's just say no. And also in my head, I was thinking already, like if I go to the left, I can't go to the left. If I go to the right, I think I have space. Like it, it's, 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 it's much harder when you're kind of in those situations. And thankfully he didn't have a knife. He was just really bad at begging. Mm. So uh, he, he just gave up and went away. But you know, a sighted person in that situation would have been able able to easily see that that person probably wasn't a threat, but I didn't have that. So, how does it differ um, to be to be blind the, the blind experience in Finland as opposed to the U.S. where you're originally from? I think in Finland, as I said before, people are much more open to helping. There's a lot less suspicion in Finland because uh, Americans don't trust each other at all. Mm. That's why we can't have nice things because Americans uh, always think that someone is faking it to have more. You know, um, when I was in school, I had an assistant for the first uh, eight grades who never did any of my homework for me. Uh, she only would maybe read things to me so I didn't have to strain my eyesight trying to read them myself or, or just little things like that. And I consistently got good grades. Um, I was an honor student up until Until I started going to punk rock shows when I was a teenager and then everything <laughs> went downhill. But uh, so um, I, I consistently was on the honor roll and that was something that uh, that was something that my some of the teachers and a lot of the students were like, oh, but you can't see. So your assistant must be doing your homework for you. You know, whereas now when I'm studying, uh, I do distance studies in engineering, actually. And, uh, you know, I've gotten not perfect grades, but consistently OK grades at mm. school and no one's. No one's bat an eye. It's like, yeah, okay, fine. Like everyone assumes and probably realizes that sometimes someone is reading me the materials. But uh, here it's just like, yeah, whatever. Cool. You do you. Uh, Alicia, uh, I know that you say that you generally find that uh, things here in, in Finland are okay for people with your kind of uh, uh, disability. But do you think there's anything that can be done to make your life uh, a bit easier? Definitely. Um Having resources that are separate for young visually impaired people versus older visually impaired people would go a long way. Uh, right now, you know, the Blind Association is kind of an all-encompassing thing, whether you're 14 or 84. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you get medical care uh, with the public uh, sector, you're always kind of also lumped in with the older people. And uh, so your appointments are given to you as if you were an older person. It's, it's really hard in Finland to uh, be young, visually impaired and also living a quote-unquote normal life mm. because anytime you need help it's just you know the hours are weird because they assume you're not working and it's it's, it's difficult so I think the biggest thing that Finland could do would just be to um, kind of make more resources available after hours you know doctor's appointments that could be in the evening uh, in general important meetings that could be later in the afternoon not kind of assuming that all visually impaired people are free with no schedule and nothing to do um the uh, blind associations could have more events and resources uh targeted towards younger mm. people you know because a lot of what my local blind association does is like how to use a computer which i think is really important i think it's really really wonderful that there's resources for older blind people uh to learn how to you know navigate online banking and things like that because that's the world we live in but you know 
I'm a millennial, so my whole life has been spent <laughs> in front of a screen, so I don't need that. I right. I would much rather have, you know, like an audiobook club or something a bit more relevant to mm. to someone my age. Blind association <laughs> if you're listening. Yeah, audiobook club. Yes. <laughs> Villa, I just wanted to bring you in a little bit here because um, I mean, what the reason we brought Alicia back was because it was very interesting to hear um, how working life and life in general is different. But I mean, have, have you ever worked with someone with a disability uh, here? Well, I have to say that not very closely. No, I, ha- I really haven't. Do you want much. to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you got Always some kind of project to help with? <laughs> Certainly. I've got a lot of editing you can do. <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting question because according to data that we uh, dug up uh, from the uh, National Institute for Health and Welfare, the THL, it says that there are 80,000 blind people in Finland. It's a pretty big population. You would imagine that at some point some... Uh, recruiters or people in HR would have uh, come across if they wanted to maybe uh, someone with uh, either a visual or some other kind of disability mm. in in the workforce. And I'm uh, just wondering if you think very quickly, in general, workplaces are equipped to onboard people with these kinds of disabilities. Uh I really Easy question, more. no yeah, pressure. Question. <laughs> Especially well, for me to answer. I think <laughs> probably Lisa would be the would be a, a better person to answer this yeah. because mm. I, I I really wouldn't see it from from a mm. blind person's point of view. Well, I can tell yeah, you, I can tell you that uh, according to my um, one of my board members at our local blind association in Bori, uh, he didn't have a real statistic, but he he pretty bluntly said that the majority of blind people in Finland don't work and are mm. not seeking um, employment, which I think has a lot to do with age related, you know, right. blindness issues. And also the fact that, um, you know, a lot of blind people, I was kind of lucky in the sense that I had parents who were like, really supportive in pretty much anything that I wanted to do. My mom was like, yeah, you do it fine, you know, whatever makes you happy. And a lot of blind people don't have that. Mm. Especially, you know, my dad was blind, so he lived his whole life as a mechanic and a drummer. <laughs> so those are two things you don't expect a blind person to be able to do. So that was my influence growing up. So, of course, I knew that I could do anything. But if you're someone who is born blind to sighted parents, the sighted parents might not know how to uh, how to handle that. And so they might sort of be afraid for you that something's going to happen to you. So they might shelter you a bit. And that's something that I think is a shame. Um, and that's why you see maybe so few younger mm. blind people out and about yeah. is because the parents don't know where to send them and then the the easy solution is to just you know right have them be home or have them do so maybe something. more career guidance for younger people mm. with visual disabilities yeah, yeah definitely so. and letting them But letting them know that they can do more than just you know right something simple yeah Well, now it's time to move on to the big political news of the week and the resignation of Harry Hjallis Harkimo from the National Coalition Party. Harkimo is a first-term MP elected in 2015, but he has a very high profile as a chat show host, ice hockey club owner and a gossip mag staple. Now, he says he's dissatisfied with the NCP's leadership and wants to establish his own new political movement with a market liberal outlook in collaboration with ex-SDP secretary Mikhail Jungner. Now, Villa, um, what's the background here? Well, uh, certainly came as no surprise for for his fellow MPs, or at least not as a great surprise, because uh, Harkimo has for a long time been very openly critical about some of the government's key projects, mm-hmm. especially the healthcare reform that mm-hmm. they're going through or trying to drive through. And uh, and also, I think there's for for ho- the whole of his first term, there's been something of a businessman's sort of disappointment with the way that politics works. You know, he comes from from a background where things move fast, and 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 you do. Uh, yes, you basically, yeah, things things move move very fast, and and now he's been having a very hard time trying to see how I fit into the political culture mm. where where back channels are more important and 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 discussion is very uh, much more important he was very critical of of the leadership of the NCP but then again 
he hasn't taken part in 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 his parliamentary groups meetings for instance mm. because he 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 basically he views those as a talking shop only mm. but lots of politics is about discussion he's used to being the boss i guess mm. yeah yeah Now, uh, he hasn't said that he wants to form a new political party. He's been Mm. very coy on that subject. In his press conference yesterday, he said that, well, you'll just have to wait and see, and I'll announce my intentions at a later date. So it's a bit of a cliffhanger as as it stands. But if he does, uh, it seems like the the odds are in his favor in the sense that uh, new political parties in Europe have been doing quite well. So, for example... Uh, there's Macron in in France and the Five Star Movement in Italy. Could Harkimo could be the man in Finland to sort of work a similar kind of magic here? Well, he certainly he and Jungner are certainly trying to, because uh, today uh, the newspaper Ilta Sanomat reported that Harkimo has registered an organization that's oh. called Liikendut Movement Now, which pretty closely. He blatantly sort of like imitates the un, uh, uh, imitates Anmarsh, mm. Macron's Anmarsh. But so far, if you look at the people who have been associated with this movement, there's Harkimon, there's Mikhail Jungner, who, as as he said, is is the former party secretary for the Social Democrats, and there's been, and at least there's been, they have been trying to woo. Suviane Simes and and some other people who are who who have like long careers in politics and who are all middle aged. Right. Not so exactly it doesn't fresh really faces. look like yeah. a, a, a new fresh movement. <laughs> right. If you look at the people on, uh, people on board so far, but of course you know you always have to be you, you sort of like if if anyone wants to renew politics, you sort of always have to wish for them to succeed. Right. But I have to be. I, I, I'm a. I'm a bit cynical if this mm. one, this movement, is the one to make it. What about uh, you know what things look like from the, the the perspective of the electorate? I mean, is there really any appetite appetite out there for another party? I mean, we've seen the uh, the Finns party split. So there's the Blue Reform, the Finns party. We've seen Pavo sort of head off in his, mm. his own direction from from the center party, and now the National Coalition party. And it's just the landscape seems quite fragmented and quite mm. cluttered to the average voter. Do you, do you think people are really interested, or? Well, probably, probably not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, would you vote for a new market liberal party? Of course not. <laughs> I think I, I think unregulated capitalism is one of the worst ideas ever, and I think I think we have enough. I think we have enough business people in European politics already. We don't need another KHL hockey team owner to you know suddenly decide that he wants to have his own his own party. I think having this fragmentation, as Denise just said, uh, is is awful. It's it's just so it's like adults playing like I don't want to be with your club anymore. I'm going to have my own club. Like it's <laughs> it's it's so silly. Just just. And it's 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 interesting that you know his his whole thing. I, I read the article uh, that you guys had released yesterday. Um, that uh, his whole thing is that he's against Solte. Well, of course, it's easy to be against Solte when no one still really knows what that even means, and <laughs> it's easy to un- unite in opposition to something, but it's harder to agree on something. So, I mean, maybe there might be some more um, market liberal. Uh, unregulated capitalism types who think this is a great idea. Yeah, he's anti sote but like when he has an actual proposal or real clear idea, then I'm open to hearing it. But right now, it's just like rich man does thing. Wow, <laughs> yeah. what a story! That's not an, that, that that's was... not a rare view. We actually had a comment on Facebook from mm-hmm. um, Gareth James who said that. I don't much like the politics that the two men, meaning Harkimo and Jungner, um, practice, but anything that helps the political discourse grow is a good thing in my book. And I think, well, that's a fairly common view that people are sceptical, but uh, yeah, well, good luck to them. But just very quickly, Villa, uh, last question. The the SOTA that um, Lysia mentioned, the healthcare reform, is to be voted um, by Parliament in June. Do you think the government has the votes to get it through? Well, so far they do, but it's a very narrow mar- margin. I think uh, without 
before 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 Har- Harkimon leaving, I think it was 105 to 95. That's right. And they still yeah, and they still have the numbers to make it, but uh, but you have to take into account that there are more people who are critical about Sota in especially in NCP. So with Harkimo leaving and and the MP, uh, MP Lepomäki voting op- openly against this could there could be a momentum where mo- more people will be sort of like uh leaving the 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 sort of ranks in in NCP so it will be a tight call for them and that's definitely something that we'll be looking to follow up as it develops now it's time to have a look at some of the other news stories that we at Irla News covered this week <laughs> The non-discrimination ombudsman asked MPs for the right to intervene in workplace discrimination. In her annual report, the ombudsman also said that schools that don't weed out harassment should be designated as discriminatory. In a related move, Sports and Culture Minister Sampo Terho said he'd be looking into the possibility of establishing a harassment ombudsman to nip that practice in the bud. And we heard that the anti-immigration group Finland First was implicated in a number of offences during its protest camp in central Helsinki. An Interior Ministry report said that members of the group were suspected of offences including assault. The camp was set up last year in response to asylum seekers protesting Finnish immigration policy. Police cleared both camps in June. The Centre Party Youth Wing issued a call to legalise brothels in Finland. The junior politicians argued that decriminalizing brothels would help ensure that sex professionals can practice their trade more safely. However, their party elders have been rather cool on the idea, saying that it would require more careful examination. And things got a bit quieter in parts of the country yesterday when workers in the building trade downed tools and went on strike over a pay dispute. The two-day work stoppage affected seven concrete firms and is expected to last about four weeks. The union said that the industrial action will cost the sector some 30 million euros each day. On a somewhat lighter note, Finland's homegrown burger chain Hesburger said it's expanded into Iran with a new restaurant in the capital, Tehran. It's not the only foreign Hesburger location, though. The company has outlets in Ukraine, Germany, the Baltics and the far eastern Russian coastal city of Vladivostok. And finally on this week's news menu, Finland's favourite foods remain traditional staples such as baked salmon, mince, macaroni casserole and meatballs. That's according to a survey by the food giant Kesko. The study found little movement in Finnish food preferences, although items such as lasagna, tortillas and pizza made their way into the top nine most popular dishes. Don't forget, you can read more about these and other stories on our website at wiley.fi slash news. So, macaroni latico, that's the meat and macaroni mince. It's still a huge favorite in Finland. Ville, I'm looking at you. Is that at the top of your list? Uh, maybe not top of my list, but <laughs> yes, I am familiar with the dish. <laughs> 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 Who isn't? And, and we do have the vegetarian version at home at sometimes. Yeah. What's the vegetarian version of that? Yeah, is, is you it just have without the soy texture thing. Ah, just mince. I see. That's I mean, mince. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> what about you, Alicia? I see you sort of looking a little bit skeptical about it. I don't understand the point of a food that is just carbs onto which you put ketchup. I just, <laughs> I, I don't get it. The first time it was ever made for me. Um, I actually asked my ex, like, did your mom forget to put something in here? And she's like, he was like, no, it's it's supposed to be like that. You're, you're supposed to put ketchup on it. It's supposed to be dry. <laughs> and I was thinking, what is the point of a food that you make that's supposed to be dry? You're missing the point. The point is the ketchup. I hate ketchup, though. <laughs> I love tomato sauce, tomato puree, tomato paste, you know, fresh tomatoes. But ketchup is just, its it tastes like a lollipop of tomato-ness. I don't like it at all. Mm. But baked, <laughs> baked salmon is great. Baked salmon, I can get right behind that. Meatballs, of course, like grandma's meatballs, why not? But macaroni casserole, like, no way. No way. <laughs> What about you, Denise? You sound quite skeptical. Well, uh, I mean, I don't mind ketchup, you know, unlike Alicia, I, you know, I, 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 I can live with I can live with ketchup. And I has, do hesitate to name a favorite Finnish food. But can you believe that I've grown quite fond of mammy? I love really? it, too. 
Yeah. With ice cream. Have you had it with vanilla ice cream? I have not tried it with ice cream. You have to have it with vanilla ice cream. It's to die for. My bucket list in life includes having Mammy with Guinness. Uh I have not got around to it. Because I think the the flavors are kind of complementary. You know, Guinness Mm. is a malt drink. Mammy has malt, I think, or something like that in it. Is that a thing that people do? Mammy and Guinness? Is is that? Well, Vila, is that a thing? Let's make it a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it starts right here. Right here, right now on the All Points North podcast. My, Egan, mommy. what about you? I, well, um, I, I mostly eat non-finished foods, uh, but I do have a soft spot for the macaroni casserole, the, the vegetarian version of it, um, so long as I can have the freedom to add non-canonical ingredients and... and, and <laughs> Make it a little bit less boring. See? You make it your own. Yeah, just a few, some some fried mushrooms, you know, maybe olives or something. Mm. You know, just ketchup. Yeah. Ketchup, <laughs> I do, ketchup if you have to. Yeah. I do have to say, I do have to say in the, I mean, I, I don't uh, make a lot of finished food at home either. I usually, you know, do my own thing in, in my kitchen. Uh, but on the odd occasion when I do make this uh, macaroni latte, go, I do pimp it, I, I have to say. I, I, it's never the straight thing. Mm. I add sweet corn or some kind of vegetable. I would say that most people do. Really? Mm. Put, put, put some carrots on it. Or something yeah. Like that. yeah. That's actually a brilliant idea for a reality show. If anyone from the upper heads at Ule are listening, <laughs> pimp my casserole. <laughs> I would watch pimp my casserole. I, I, Every week we go to someone's house and we watch how they make macaroni latte go in their own way. Another tip that I have, if anybody's listening, is that, you know, when it comes to serving the dish itself, I just love, you know, just a liberally sprinkling chopped uh, parsley as a serving option. Okay. Because, yeah, it's, I mean, the, the flavor, you know, the ketchup, the sweetness of the ketchup with all that <laughs> sh- added sugar <laughs> versus the bite of the parsley, it's fantastic. <laughs> It sounds brilliant. It sounds brilliant. I just want to leave. (laughs) (laughs) I feel I feel personally attacked by this conversation. (laughs) Guess what? Guess guess what we're gonna have for lunch? (laughs) I'm I'm, I've already decided I'm going to New Bamboo Center. I'm gonna have a delicious ketchup-free Asian experience. Lovely beef curry with no ketchup. Good on you. (laughs) Sounds great. (laughs) Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today on All Points North, and that means it's time to talk about the weekend. I'll be heading to (laughs) sorry. I'll be heading to Herica's sex and science event tonight. Let that sink in. Okay. <laughs> Egan, what are you up for? <laughs> Nothing that that exciting or educational, um, unfortunately. But I did hear that this weekend, triple Irish Eurovision winner, um, once for his for writing the the song, Johnny Logan, is touring Finland, mm. and he's in Lauka tonight, and I'd love to go. Um, but in case I don't make it there, there's also a children's fair at the Exhibition Centre or Mesu Keskus, um, which is a good option uh, with the kids, yes. obviously, if you're in Helsinki. Alicia, what about you? Uh, well, tonight I am going to have a relaxing sauna evening, apparently by myself. And uh, tomorrow I will be headed to Uvascula because we are going to do... Uh, our monthly amateur 90s radio program with uh, me and my friends. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow a long train ride followed by some wonderful Eurodance and uh, other surprises. Sounds exciting. It's Sounds great. great. How about you, Villa? What are you up to? Well, tonight I think I will have be having my first beer outside this spring. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, and tomorrow I'm heading for the... for the Seagulls basketball match. That would be the second semi-final for the for the Helsinki home team. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, it's heading into the playoffs now. Yeah, you reckon they'll win? Uh, I do hope so. Okay. <laughs> How did we manage to get sport into this episode? I don't, we, I don't we didn't even <laughs> put the sport <laughs> there. It was. It just playoffs. comes. They just snuck Sorry. it in. I, I really never go to any sports events, so this is a very bad. Oh event. my goodness! I I, I give up. <laughs> One day we'll have a sports-free show, Denise. I promise. But that's all from us this week. Um, I've been Egan Richardson. My co-presenter was Denise Wall. Thanks to our special guests, Villa Sauri and Licia Pren. Our producer today was Mark Odom and our sound engineer was Juha Sekinen. Thanks for joining us and don't forget to subscribe, get in touch and even leave a review wherever you get your podcasts. You can stay up to date at yle.fi news 
and listen to previous editions of this show at ulert.fi slash allpointsnorth. You've been listening to All Points North, a podcast produced by Ule News, a unit of the Finnish broadcasting company. For daily news from Finland in English, head to yle.fi slash news and follow us online at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You've been listening to Ule News.